Hello and welcome back. So, so far in this section, in order to handle exceptions, we have been using NestJS built-in exception filters. So, if I go to the documentation of NestJS, here we have a list of exception filters which is provided by NestJS and these are NestJS built-in exception filters and we have used some of them in our application. Now, remember that these exception filters are nothing but classes and these exception classes are used to throw a specific exception with a specific status code. So for example, when you want to throw an exception in the response where the status code should be 400 for bad request, you will use this exception class. So for this exception class, whenever you will throw an exception of type bad request exception, the status code is always going to be 400 and the error message is going to be bad request. In the same way, if you throw this exception, unauthorized exception, in that case, the status code is always going to be 401 and the error message will be unauthorized or you can say the status will be unauthorized. In the same way, if you throw this exception, not found exception, so in this case, the status code is always going to be 404 and the status is going to be not found. So these built-in exception are used to throw a specific exception with a specific status code and a specific status. And as I said, all these exceptions are nothing but they are classes. And these exception classes, all of them inherits from this generic HTTP exception class. And since these exceptions are nothing but classes, that's why whenever we are throwing any one of these exception, before that, we use new keyword. So if I go back to VS Code, you will see that when we are throwing this request timeout built-in exception, before that, we have used this new keyword. So here, basically, before throwing this request timeout exception, we are creating an instance of this request timeout exception, and we are calling the constructor of this exception. And the constructor of this exception will set an error message and a description for that exception on that particular instance. Then here also, when we are throwing a bad request exception, before that we have used this new keyword. So it is going to create an instance of this bad request exception. And on that instance, we are setting this error message. So all these exceptions which you see here, they are nothing but classes. And these classes inherits from this HTTP exception class. The HTTP exception is the generic exception class. Now let's say you have a situation where you want to throw an exception from your NestJS application, but you want to set the status code of that exception by yourself. If we use built-in exceptions, there the status code and the status is predefined. But you want to throw an exception where you will define the status code for that exception and you will define the status of that exception along with the error message and error description. So that we can do with the help of this HTTP exception class, which is the generic exception class. All these built-in exceptions, they inherit from this HTTP exception class. So in NestJS, HTTP exception is a fundamental class for handling HTTP errors and providing standardized error responses. And it allows you to throw exceptions that NestJS automatically translates into HTTP responses with appropriate status code and error message. And using generic HTTP exception provides flexibility in handling various error scenarios. Let's try to understand this with an example. So what I'm going to do is, here we have this find user by ID method. And using this method, what we are doing is we are finding a user based on the ID. So here, before returning the response, let me go ahead and let me create a variable. Let me call it as user. And here, this find one by method, it is going to return us a user. We are assigning that user to this user variable. So instead of directly returning it, first we are assigning it to this user variable. Now, if the ID which we have provided with that ID, if a user exists in the user table, then that user will be returned and it will be assigned to this user variable. But let's say if we have provided an ID with which we do not have any user in the user table, in that case, this code here, it will return undefined because it will not be able to find any user with that given user ID. So in that case, it will return undefined. 
So here, what we want is we want to check if the user does not exist. So for that, I'm going to use this not operator on this user. So if the user does not exist, this user will be undefined. And on that, I'm using this not operator in order to make it a truthy value so that the code inside this if statement can be executed. And here, I want to throw a new exception. So here I'll say throw new and instead of using a built-in exception here i'm going to use http exception class which is the generic exception and when we use http exception if i hover over this http exception you will see that it takes three arguments the first argument is the response this response can be a string value or it can also be an object the second argument which we need to pass to this http exception is the status the status which we want to set for the response and the third argument here is an optional options object and in that options object we can set some options for the response so let's see each of them one by one so for the response let's say i want to return an object in that object i want to first set the status and let's say the status is going to be not found and to set the status we can use http status dot and here you can see a list of all the status which you can set here i want to set the status as not found because here the exception which we are throwing we are throwing it because a user with a given id was not found so that's why i'm going to set the status as not found okay then the second setting which i want to do here is i want to set the error message okay and the error message is let's say going to be the user with given id or maybe here let's say the user with id and then i want to use this id in this response so let's use this id was not found okay and then you can also set some other properties if you want but here i am only going to keep the status and the error for example if you want to add let's say in which table the user was searched for so for here you can say table and then you can specify the table name for example user okay then the second argument will be the status code which you want to send with the response so basically the status number and to get the status number again on the http status you can set the status so here i want to use not found so this will set the response status code and here we are setting the response status to not found and then we also have a third optional argument which is again going to be an object now remember that whatever you're going to set inside this third argument inside this object it will not be sent back to the client so this object you can use for example logging the exception in the database or in the log file or for something which might be helpful for the developers in order to debug the exception which has occurred okay so inside this object you can also have some sensitive information which you don't want to show to the client but which can be helpful for the developer when debugging this exception so here for example let me go ahead and let me specify one property which is description and here let's say the exception occurred because a user with id and then let's use the id was not found in users table okay so this information here this will be helpful for the developer in order to debug this exception which has occurred but this information will not be sent to the client with this let's save the changes and currently we are using this find user by id method in other modules but we have not created any endpoint to find a user by id so what i'll do is let's go to user controller.ts and here we have this get users method now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a get user by id method okay and here i'm going to use find user by id so here let's say for this endpoint we are going to get the id as the route parameter and 
we are going to read that id from the route parameter so here let's use at param okay and using this at param we want to read the value of id parameter and we also want to convert it to integer type so here i'm going to use parse int pipe okay and then let's specify the parameter name which is going to be id of type number all right and let's pass this id to this find user by id method let me save the changes in the controller and now let's go to postman let me create a new request here so here let me copy this url let's open a new tab here we want to make a get request to this url and here i'm going to pass the id as 11. okay if i send the request it says cannot get let's see why we have this error so here we are making a get request we are calling the find user by id method here we are finding the user if the user does not exist we are throwing an exception all right but if the user exists in that case we want to return that user that user object right let's save the changes again let's go to postman let's send this request one more time and now you will see that the user details with that user id has been returned here but in our user table we do not have any user with id 100 right so in this case if i send the request you will see that now we are getting this 404 not found response and this response we are getting because from here we are throwing an http exception where we have set these http status as not found this is our error message and the status code will be not found and for not found the status code is 404 so that's what you will see here in the response and here you will also see that the user with id 100 was not found and this is the error message which we are sending with this exception so if you see error here is the user with id and then the id for which we want to search the user was not found and we should also see the table so if i go back to postman you'll also see that here we also have the table in which we were searching for so the table name is user so this object which you see here in the response this response has been sent by throwing this exception so basically that response is this object and the status code is set using this second argument where we are setting the status as not found and for the not found the status code is 404 and you will not see this object anywhere in the response because as i mentioned this will not be sent to the client okay so in this way we can use this http exception class in order to throw a generic exception where we as a developer can set the error response we can set the status code and we can specify some extra information which might be helpful to the developers while throwing that exception so here instead of using any built-in exception from the nest.js we are creating our own exception with the help of http exception class and this is how we can create our own custom exceptions so in this lecture we learned how we can use this http exception class to throw a generic exception where we can set the error response as well as the status code for the response in the next lecture what we will do is we will create our own custom exception class and just like how we have used these built-in exception classes we will use our own custom exception class in order to throw a custom exception so this is all i wanted to cover in this lecture if you have any questions from this lecture then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day